Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm wearing my head slap shirt. Head slap's a band, a bunch of friends of mine together, a great rock and roll band that I'm helping out. Go find them on social media, Instagram, Facebook. Um, give them a, a follow and a like, they sure would appreciate it. And plus, they're really freaking good. Now, on to Idaho. So why am I talking about Idaho again? Well, just because I read something this morning in the Yahoo News about the headline was Idaho college killing suspect was first arrested in 2014 record show. Is this really news? Really? I mean, public information. Anybody can find that out. Why is this big news? He wasn't arrested for murder. You know what it was? Theft. He stole his sister's cell phone. And guess who turned him in? Dad. The same dad that some of you people think helped commit the murders. Mm. Anyhow. It, the reason that I'm talking about this is because it just amazes me. Remember a couple of videos, I've said it a couple times, and I use the exact phrase. It will make headlines now that if Koberger, what he eats for dinner in jail, you know, if he has a cheeseburger, people are going to write about it. It's just amazing to me how the media works, okay? They latch on to something and then they just don't let it go um, until something bigger comes along. And it was like this for Delphi for a while, you know, everything. And then Idaho kind of doubled down on that. And then everything was... Idaho and everything is Koberger because of his arrest. But I've noticed a lot of times it will usually die down after an arrest. It did in in Delphi. So, but it really hasn't too much in Idaho. And I'm wondering if it's because the suspect was not who most people thought it would be in that he was educated and this and that and uh or, or what, or if it's just the the hold that it has on the nation, I, I don't know. But does it surprise me that this guy was arrested before? Uh, no. I mean, it's been documented he had struggles uh, with substance abuse, in particular, Lee, heroin. Um, so, I mean, that theft comes along with it. There, there's no doubt. So, but of his sister's cell phone... Eh, that bugs me a little bit because usually if it's something in-house like that, you want to keep it in-house. You don't want the outside forces. But I understand as a parent, uh, him, his dad probably wanting to scare him and, you know, scare him straight. So maybe that was what that was. And it wasn't some petty thing where, hey, I'm just going to call the cops on you and let them handle it. I mean, you'd have to know the family dynamics uh, but I would lean and dare to say, hey, he was trying to scare him straight, saying, hey, this is the last straw. I'm calling the cops. Maybe that'll scare you into sobriety. It never does. That doesn't work. Um, but, you know, you, you don't stop trying. You try everything that you can. So uh, I just found it very ironic and very not ironic. I, I don't know what the word is. almost want to say stupid that this makes headlines now the other day when I read that the defense doesn't want or didn't find they say that they filed a motion that the prosecution didn't find any DNA from the victims in the car and I did a video about that you're gonna see that uh, so stay tuned for that but now that's newsworthy I think 
this theft of a cell phone, really? You're getting almost like front page news for something that a heroin addict did in 2014 just because your name is Koberger? Uh, I, I just, I don't know, doesn't bug me, whatever. It is what it is. But I just think that it's it's a little bit out there how the media latches onto something and we we stick to it. Um, I, I think it would be newsworthy if Koberger got shanked while in jail. County jail, that's not going to happen. He's going to be in protective custody no matter where he goes because of the high profile. But as we know, the Bureau of Prisons can make a mistake. Uh, we've seen that in Whitey Bulger, right? You leave him alone in a transfer unit for a day and he's beaten to death with a lock inside of a sock uh, by two, you know, uh, mafia henchmen, you know, so to speak. So, well, some will say that that was done on purpose and maybe it was, but it was certainly done and Whitey Bulger, you know, most likely got what he deserved. You know, again, I always say about the death penalty, I don't really, I don't agree with it anymore. I used to when I was younger, but the older you get, you become more educated on things and you look at life differently. And I just look at life now as like the most precious thing that we know of for sure. And to have a government take that away from you, no matter how bad you are, uh, I just don't like that. But... The justice that Whitey Bulger received, for some reason, I don't have much of a problem with that. So you can see how it's uh, it's almost a catch-22 and how I view the death penalty. But that's neither here nor there. We're talking about Idaho. Um, the theft of a cell phone and what's next. Between now and trial, remember I was, I talked to you guys, I was supposed to go to... Uh, Fox News studio and do a roundtable with Mark Furman um, and two attorneys about this case. And it was set up to go, but then he got indicted and we didn't, there's no prelim. So the show got pushed back to closer to the trial. So between now and the trial, expect a lot of headlines like this where they are searching for things, you know, that is newsworthy on the Idaho murders. You're going to see stuff about Koberger getting leaked. Uh, more people now as time of this tragedy has passed are going to speak about it. Probably the victim's friends. They'll find more of Koberger's friends, co-workers, and they've already done that, but more will come out now that it's getting further away from the tragedy. So look for that. I would say this would be my ratio. Out of a hundred uh, news articles about Koberger that's going to run between now and the time his trial is, uh, you're probably going to get about seven that are newsworthy, in my opinion. The rest are going to be fluff and National Enquirer type stuff. Do they even have the National Enquirer anymore? I don't, I don't know. I used to read those when I was in line for the grocery store. In fact, I got one here that I'm in. And that's when I like I realized, hey man, I made it big time. I'm in the the Globe, the National Enquirer. While I'm standing in line reading about what was it? Uh, I always want to say Fred Durst from Limp Biscuit, <laughs> but it was Durst, Robert Durst maybe from some HBO series, The Jinx. I think I don't remember what it was, but anyhow, I, some National Globe or the Globe or National Enquirer got a hold of me way back then and interviewed me about some crime scene photos and stuff and uh, I was in line at the grocery store and picked it up flipping through it and there I was I was like oh man I made it I'm in National Enquirer with uh, Elvis being alive and getting uh, the moon landing faked maybe that's where all my conspiracy doubt comes from is the globe and me being associated with it it's like you're six degrees of separation from Kevin Bacon Maybe that's it. I don't know. But anyhow, that's what I wanted to talk about. Hey, just be not careful because you, you read what you want, and but take it with a grain of salt or, or whatever it is. It's not, this has nothing to do with the murders, okay? 
I guess that's the biggest point I want to make. They're saying, you know, the headline is he was arrested in 2014. That's all they say. So everybody clicks on it because they think, oh, he maybe he was arrested for a murder. And, and it's physically impossible. Well, not physically impossible, but more than likely, that's impossible. He would have been arrested and convicted. Now, if it would have said he is a suspect in a 2014 murder, well, okay then. But I still believe this was his first murder. And I know a quadruple homicide is hard for people to wrap their head around to say, hey, that's just, that couldn't have been his first homicide. He would have never chose four victims. Well, maybe he didn't intend for four victims to be there. Maybe he only intended on one. Go back and watch my other videos. It explains what I my thought process is on that. But anyhow, he was arrested for theft of his sister's cell phone. Not a big deal, not newsworthy in my opinion, but obviously it got me to get on here and talk to you guys about it, right? So I guess it did its job. I'm doing mine, relaying it to you. That's it, a little update. Thanks for watching. Mains out.